Representative Duffy, what are some of the ways that we can go about cutting off Islamic State's funding? Well, uh, Trisha, as you mentioned, they bring in revenue of a million dollars a day, but some have said they have up to uh, two billion dollars of reserves. And so what we talked about today was how is Treasury partnering with other global partners to break up their finance network? Uh, if we can cut up their, the, the, the finances of ISIS, we can actually undermine their ability um, to use the money that they bring in uh, off the black market, off of oil. And I got to tell you what, in the hearing, I was not very pleased with what I heard from, from Treasury. It was a lackluster effort. It's kind of the same uh, it, uh, focus that the, the administration has put on with actually destroying ISIS itself, uh, whether it is the limited airstrike. Uh, which has been less than what uh, George Bush has done um, and Bill Clinton had done. Uh, and it, uh, again, it was lackluster. So, but what, what, Trish, what I think came away, from, my takeaway from the hearing was this. Um, you have uh, most of the money coming from oil sales in the black market. Right. And you have trucks of oil that are leaving wells and refineries. We, I mean, this is, this, we can see it from the air. Why aren't we blowing up uh, these trucks of oil that will totally shut down their revenue stream and uh, their ability to finance themselves. And there's no good answer for that. And, and I think the administration has to look at all the tools that are on the table for them to you know, defeat and destroy it, ISIS. It, I'll tell you, Senator McCain was on uh, here in New York with me the other day. Um, and we were talking about Islamic State and how exactly to address this. Of course, as you well know, he is very much a proponent of sending more troops there and really embracing this situation head on. Is that the answer? Do we need to be doing more? We can't rely on, uh, on people there in the community to try and lead this effort. It needs to be a U.S.-led effort to destroy Islamic State. Well, I, I do think it has to be a U.S.-led effort, and I think we have to keep all options on the table. Not that we have to use every option, but for the president to come out and talk about all the things he will not do, I think that just sets up your enemy uh, to navigate uh, their, their battlefield consistent with the limitations we, we put on our engagement. And so uh, I do think we need especially special forces on the ground with this engagement if we're going to be successful in defeating them. And if you look over the last three months since the president has truly engaged, which I think has been too little too late, um, he hasn't been successful. They haven't been brought back. They've actually expanded and grown their territory. Their influence is, uh, is greater. And they're inspiring jihadists from around the world to join their ranks and help them fight. I mean, this is a scary situation. Represent and so I think at all components, the president has failed. Representative Duffy, I do want to ask you about the Keystone Pipeline. The vote is expected tomorrow there in the House. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the, the sort of uh, environment surrounding this vote and what we can anticipate next from the Senate. Well, in the House, this is nothing new. We've been supporting the Keystone Pipeline. We've had several votes. We're going to do it again. Uh, the Senate has been something different. They, uh, they have been unwilling to take up the Keystone Pipeline. Now that Mary Landrieu is in danger of losing her seat in Louisiana, uh, they've found a, a, a new interest in the Keystone Pipeline because a lot of jobs in Louisiana come from the energy sector. I think, uh, though some Democrats and, and Democrat analysts have been calling the American people stupid, uh, Louisianans are smart and they'll realize that this is just a political ploy from Mary Landrieu to try to bring the Keystone Pipeline to the forefront to save her job, even yeah, though she hasn't been very concerned. Concerned about I mean, if it gets through the in, Senate, in that, that's, that's good news for you guys. So, you know, regardless good, of, of the motivation, that's et cetera, uh, where does it true. then go from there? It would go to the president. Do you anticipate that he would veto this? Well, I know that Mary Landrieu has put some pressure on him. I, I, I have a hard time seeing the president going against his liberal environmental base and signing that legislation that comes from the House and the Senate. However, uh, if he vetoes it, it should get back in time to the, to the House and the Senate for a veto override. And I think it'll be interesting what happens there, which would happen before the Louisiana election. We're getting word that the president may issue an executive order on immigration as soon as next week. What's your reaction to that, Representative Duffy? I mean, I know that there is some concern that executive orders are not the way you want to go about changing uh, something so important as immigration. Rather, you might want to work with lawmakers there on Capitol Hill to get it done first. First of all, I think the American people want to see Congress and the president work together. If the president uses executive action on immigration, I think it is going to create uh, a lot of bad will between Republicans and Democrats and with the administration. Uh, what I would hope the president would do is say, listen, there is a bipartisan effort on both sides of the aisle to secure the border, to actually deal with those who've come here without legal status, to deal with our dreamers, but to do it the right way. And if the president does it on his own, uh, I think it's going to be a bad sign for collaboration and cooperation between the two parties looking forward. Well, and, you know, frankly, mm -hmm. this is not a top issue for most, most 
most Americans. Uh, we're talking about the economy and jobs and energy independence and ISIS and Ebola. That the president's going to now talk about immigration at a time when Americans are focused on something else. I think that's a diversion uh, tactic. But, but, but I would argue that immigration is an important issue actually for both parties it because it represents a very large voting bloc come 2016. You no, know, you know it is, but uh, most Americans who are out there today are concerned about other issues. Let me bring up one other point on that, though. If you look at the Dreamers, uh, the young kids who came, uh, came here, no fault of their own, they're, they're not legal. Marco Rubio in the Senate was working on a bipartisan bill that would have addressed the fate of Dreamers. The president saw that, and instead of working with the Senate and Republican Marco Rubio, he jumped ahead of them with DACA, deferred action for these young kids, making sure Republicans didn't have a win. Listen, it's not a Republican win or a Democrat win. It's an American win if we can figure out immigration. And I think the president sees all policy uh, through the lens of politics. And I think we have to look at it through the lens of what is good policy for our country uh, and for our citizens.